G'day. Welcome again to this time and space. As we gather the words from Isaiah 65. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. Words of hope. Words of promise, words of God. Let's pray. Loving Father God, as we come to this time, we would know your joy and we would delight in your presence. We come by faith. For some, bold and secure, and for others, tenuous and struggling. In your eyes, we are all children, children that are loved. And so it is in the promise of that, that we draw near. It is in the beauty of that, that we ask, Lord God, that you reveal yourself to us in this time. Speak into our hearts and our minds. Encourage and challenge us, that we might indeed bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing of our Lord and his goodness. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom. Come to him and bless his name. A couple of days ago, it was Remembrance Day, the 11th day of the 11th month. And for many, a moment to pause, a moment to look back, to think on the horror of war, to lament the human condition, 
that leads us too often to that space. To give thanks for those who are willing to stand in the gap and to pray that we would find a better way. Whatever the perspective we bring, it would be remiss of us not to acknowledge the significance of that day, that moment in history where the First World War came to a conclusion. And I know the politics and it was only an armistice and the final treaty came later and it was unfair and maybe that gave rise to Hitler and all of that stuff. But in that moment, when the guns fell silent, and those on the battlefield were able to breathe, to stand and to stretch, and those that at home could in all hopefulness believe that their loved ones would return. The war that was, in the words of those who came afterwards, the war to end all wars, that had been so horrific that the people hoped that leaders had learnt their lesson, that nations and nationalism had been taught the truth. Sadly, Again and again, we have gone down that path. It reminds us of the grace of God. This God that chooses us in spite of all of that. In spite of the way we go to the places of sin. Even when we know they're wrong. Our God is gracious. And our Lord is the Prince of Peace. Let's pray. Loving Father God, in this significant week, we come to you. To lament the brokenness of the human condition, to lament and confess our short-temperedness, our pride and our willingness to step away from your truths. We come to give thanks for those who have been prepared to give of themselves for the cause of peace, for the cause of standing against evil. And we recognize how limited we are in our understandings of these things and our embrace of your kingdom. Lord, forgive us for where we have contributed to the violence that is in our society, where we have propagated ideas that have been unhelpful, where we have allowed pride to run free, where we have chosen to remain silent rather than to stand against behaviours that divide Lord God, we remember the words of Jeremiah 23, where judgment is brought on the leaders who divide and scatter. And the word of hope is that you, the God who is righteousness, will send a shepherd that will gather, heal and protect. 
Lord Jesus, we look to you and we ask for your peace, your healing, your mercy, your truth and your love to transform our world. In Jesus' name, amen. A song I don't think I've used before. Deep peace. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. gentle night moon and stars pour their healing light on you deep peace of Christ the light of the world to you deep peace of the running the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the gentle night, moon and stars pour their healing Christ the light of the world Today we have two readings, one from Isaiah 65 and the other from Luke 21. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight, and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. 
while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Some of his disciples were remarking about how the temple was adorned with beautiful stones and with gifts dedicated to God. But Jesus said, As for what you see here, the time will come when not one stone will be left on another. Every one of them will be thrown down. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen, and what will be the sign that they are about to take place? He replied, Watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places and fearful events and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. Through the prophet comes a word of hope, a promise of a new heaven and a new earth, a new way of being, a place and a time where it's worth building houses because you will get to live in them. It's worth planting gardens because you will reap of their reward. A place and time where the wolf and the lamb We'll live together in peace. It's a beautiful vision. It's a promise of God. It's a vision of a new thing. A new way of being in the world. This is a vision of God returning us to the Garden of Eden before the fall. This, this is a word of hope. And Jesus, talking with those around, declares that the beautiful temple, the centre of religious faith, will fall. This is the God who does new things. And it's one of those headspace crackers for us where we believe in a God who is unchanging but forever is re-engaging with us in new ways. And is doing things that are for us new things. Why? Why does this God do what this God does? And where does that leave us? The, the words that the prophet Isaiah spoke give hope to the faithful because they believe that they're going to enjoy this new thing. And they actually give a sense of uh, 
vindication because there is a judgment there for those who have chosen other ways. When Jesus speaks of a new thing, the removal of the temple, and if we know our theology and our space, we know that what Jesus is saying is, this building does not contain God. It cannot contain God, as in restrain God, because God is resident in us all. This word is not received as good news. It's not received as a, a promise of God. In fact, it is received with fear. And I wonder whether that's the case for you and I. That sometimes when we hear of the new thing God is doing, we get excited because it aligns with our hopes and dreams. But other times when God is trying to do new things, we receive them with fear and anxiety because they do not align with our hopes and desires. They are beyond, perhaps, what we might imagine. And we react negatively. Teacher, they asked, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they take place? They want to know when the temple is going to get destroyed so they can be ready to respond, to fight for its survival, to engage in whatever terrible future that is coming. Jesus says, watch out that you are not deceived. For it is when we're scared that we are most likely to be led astray. It is when we are looking for a saviour from whatever our fears are that we are most likely to grab for whatever is thrown near. When, if you've ever done it, you do surf life-saving training or your bronze medallion or, or any of those sort of things. One of the first things they tell you is don't go to the drowning person if you can avoid it. Because a drowning person panicking will climb on top of you and push you under to try and save themselves. When we're scared, we do dumb stuff. Jesus says, do not be deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. Friends, from the very beginning to this very day, there are preachers and prophets out there in our community saying, the day is near, today is the day, tomorrow is the day, I know the day, follow me, I will save you. And often they cover that language in much more colourful, beautiful, seductive words. But that is what they are saying. And scripture says they are lying. The end of days is here. It's been here since Jesus came. And it will conclude when Jesus comes again. And the timing of that is utterly in God's hands. The question for a disciple of Jesus is what do I do when it's all going pear-shaped and fear is the currency of the day? We trust to him. We trust to him. Verse 14. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. And it finishes. But not a hair of your head will be perished. But stand firm that you will gain life. Friends, 
It's not that complicated. Earlier it says, you know, wars and, and all these things, they're signs of the end, but the end is not going to be here tomorrow. Now, please hear me. The end could be before I finish recording this video. But it's not our job to worry about that. It is our job to be faithful in the call of a disciple until that time. And again and again in Scripture, we are encouraged to live like it is the last days. Embodying all that God wants us to embody. So friends, please, hear the words of the Lord Jesus. God is doing new things. And God is tearing down those things that are unhelpful to us becoming all that God wants us to be. All that we were created to be. And God will be tearing down stuff that we value. That we would stop putting our trust in those things and trust Him alone. Friends, there has been wars and famine, disease and pandemics since the beginning of time. We are not to fear them. We are to work for justice and healing in them. We are to be wise. We are to learn, adapt and love. Friends, whoever and wherever we are, can we promise ourselves, each other, and our God that we will fear not, that we will be bold and courageous, that we will look to God for our salvation, that we will rely on the Holy Spirit for the strength we need for these days. Will we promise to never give up on doing good deeds? Caring, providing, loving, sharing a word of hope and the good news of the risen Christ. May we go this day to love and serve. Loving Father God, we thank you for the words of Jesus and we recognize ourselves in the panic of the disciples, in the desire to know in minute detail what is to come, that we might have some sense of control. Lord, help us to surrender the need to control and embrace the opportunity to live in your love. Gracious God, in this time of fear, may your love overcome hate and evil. May your light bring hope into dark places. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. We are sent by the Lord.
So go. Go into the world. Not in fear, but with concern. Concern for those who are struggling. Concern for those in need. May we go into the world. Not to control, but to be agents of God's mercy. May we go into the world as good witnesses to the person of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.